Hi, welcome. My name's Steve. I'm a former maths teacher and we're about to attempt a senior maths challenge from 2020 this time last year. Uh, so this was probably done in lockdown of some sort. Uh, it was the middle of November, so this might have been done online, but we're going to have a go. It was a 90 minute paper. And if you're a student about to practice this so that you're about to do one in the future, uh, this, is, this will be an idea where you sing it for me. I'm seeing these questions for pretty much the first time. Um, and I'm going to talk about my thought process as I go. If you're doing one of these um, yourself and you've never done one before, uh, bear that in mind, I've highlighted a few of the key bits here. If you haven't done one of these before, you probably won't finish. Uh, in 90 minutes, there'll be some questions you won't be able to do or won't be able to start or whatever, or there'll be some questions where it takes you too long. Um, there's often elegant ways to do these questions, so sometimes I can see a really long way of doing it where you just kind of work everything out and whatever. And I try and ignore it and find a quick way, because there's nearly always a quick way to do these. And if you don't spot those quick ways, you're not going to finish in time. The way it scores, it scores slightly differently if you've done one of the uh, other challenges, so the junior or the intermediate score slightly differently. Uh, you start with 25 marks, and if you don't answer a question, nothing happens. You don't lose any marks or anything like that. You get four points for every question you get right. And you lose a mark for every question you get wrong. So if you start guessing randomly, you actually, on average, you will lose marks. So you don't want to be guessing. And the other reason not to guess is that they're very good at giving wrong answers. So um, the answers they give you are very misleading. They're very, you know, they'll think, or oh, if maybe if he's done this is a mistake, he'll get this answer or whatever. Or maybe she thinks that that's the only logical one, and it isn't. So so don't guess. Um, and part of the fun of these, like that last point there, they, they, this is a different sort of maths. So if you haven't done this before, you're doing this at an adult and you want to try something different, this is a different sort of maths to any sort of exam you, you've seen. It's a lot more um, abstract and a lot more problem solving. And they've got different areas of maths. There's some very good geometry questions, which isn't something that we really kind of push um, at school and especially at A-level. We don't really do geometry at A-level, which is, which is a shame because I really like my geometry. But we're going to give this a go. Uh, we've got 90 minutes, so we're going to have a look at what time we start. And I'm going to use as much as 90 minutes as I can to try and answer all the questions. I don't think I've ever scored full marks on any one of these. I either there's either a question I can't do or a mistake I've made. So at some point, at some point, I will get a 25 uh, uh, full marker. Um, so let's hope that's going to be today. Although I'm a bit, uh, I feel a bit slow today. So we're going to we're going to crack on, and we're going to go on to question number one. If you want to have a go at this before, pause this video in the link uh, to the video below on YouTube. There's a link to the paper itself, so you you have a go, you download that paper, and at the very end of this video, I will be giving answers. So, good luck. Okay, so question number one. Uh, I'm just going to change what pen we're using. So, what is the value of 2020 divided by 20 times 20? Uh, so, 2020 divided by 20 is 101. And 101 divided by 20 is going to be... Well, it's 20 in that, so it's going to be 5.05, I believe. Because there's, tw uh, there's 5 in 100, and then this one will carry to another 100, and there'll be another 5. So, yeah. What is the remainder? When 1,234 multiplied by 567 is divided by 5. The long way would be to work out what this is and divide it by 5. The short way would be whatever this is, the last digit's the only one you care about because all the digits in the tens and hundreds and thousands will um, divide by 5. So if we just work out what the last digit is, it's going to be 4 times 8. So our last digit's going to be a 2. Because 4 times 8 is 32. Whatever this other number is, it's going to end in a 2. And you divide, if you divide something ending in a 2 by 5, doesn't matter what the rest of it is, your remainder is going to be 2. The shape is made up from five unit cubes, as shown. What is the surface area of the shape? So unit just means one by one by one. So that's one by one by one. And so if we look at this, we've got four that stick out, and each of those will have five faces uncovered. So we're going to have five, 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 and five. And then the one in the middle will have a top bit and a bottom bit, so two. So we've got 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 2. So the ones on the edge will have 5 units and the one in the middle will have 2. So it's going to be 22. The numbers P, Q, R and S satisfy the equations P equals 2, P 
times Q is 20, P times Q times R is 202, and P times Q times R times S is 2020, or is the value of them all added together. So if P is 2, then Q is 10. Uh, R is going to be 20 times 10.1, is it? And then this is 202, so S must be uh, 10. So we think, I'm just going to turn my speakers off. <clears throat> we think that, yeah, P, P, D, 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 yeah, I think that's right. So it's going to be 2 plus 10 plus 10.1 plus another 10, it's going to be 32.1. That is an option we've got. Just as a point, the way I do these is I never look at the options unless the question wants you to. I never look at the options until I've worked it out, and I will do my maths, and I will work it out, and if my answer is there, I'm pretty sure I'm right. And that's the best way to use these answers. I think it's more of a check to see if your answer is right, rather than trying to see which one looks the best. What is that number square rooted? What's that? That's 123 million. Hmm. Well, if I if I just do that just to get a size, if I square something of that size, I'm going to get I'm going to get eight zeros, aren't I? So that looks to be the right size is a hundred million, no thousand, no hundred thousands, and that none. If you square this one, you're just going to get too big. Even if you square that, that's just going to have too many digits, and that's not going to have enough. So I think it's this middle one, just based on the size of the number. If you rounded them to the nearest significant figure, one significant figure, and squared them, this is the only one that gets you the right amount of digits. So I'm not going to wait. I mean. I could, I could just times them together and check. Should we do that? I'm pretty sure I'm right. That's going to take ages. So let's not do that. Um, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it is C because of just based on the size of this number here. Also, there's another clue as well because you get a five here. It probably means you've got five digits getting there because if you you do 11 squared you get 121 and I imagine if you do 111 squared you'll get 12321 that would be my guess just on but just based on patterns and so you can see you've got three ones you gather three in the middle so you've got five ones you've got five in the middle that would be my guess there are fewer than 30 students in the A level mathematics class one half of them play the piano and one quarter play hockey and one seventh in the school play how many students play hockey? All right, so you need a number that you can half and quarter and divide by seven. And weirdly, if you can quarter it, you can half it. So you're looking for something you can quarter and divide by seven. Well, the things in the seven times table below 30, the only number I can think of is 28. And one quarter of them play hockey, seven. Because obviously you can't have part of a student. And that's why they're saying there are fewer than 30 students. So that you don't, because you, you could have 28 or 42 or, not 42, uh, 56 would be the next one. Official UK accent statistics show that there were 225 accents involving teapots in one year. However, in the following year, there were 47 such accidents. What was the approximate percentage reduction in the recorded accidents involving teapots from the first year to the second year? Uh, so it says approximate. So if we round it to 50 and we're looking for 50 out of 225, 
that's the same as saying we can simplify that to being 10 out of 45 So my guess is that if we've rounded this up, we can round this up and then we don't lose as much. So weirdly, although you could round that down, I think we're going to write this as 50 out of 250. And that gives us 10 out of 50. And then this is a, this is 20%, so it's an 80% reduction. Because we've rounded them both up, we're not losing as much accuracy. You could round this up and this down, and then you'd lose more accuracy, I think. You'd get 75%. And then you wouldn't be as you wouldn't know which one of these two it is, but it has to be eighty percent. If you ran them both up, you'd you're just more accurate. What's the largest prime factor of one hundred and six squared take away fifteen squared? Hmm. Well, this is a difference of two squares, so you can write that as one hundred and six plus fifteen. Multiplied by 106, subtract 15, and then what we're going to look at, what we're going to look at these numbers. So this is going to be 121 multiplied by 91, and then those I know that is 11 squared, and that is 7 times 13. So the largest prime factor is going to be 13. nice that they split into two bits. In 2018, a racing driver was allowed to use the drag reduction system, provided that the car was within one second of the car ahead. Suppose two cars are one second apart, each travelling at 180 kilometres an hour in the same direction. How many metres apart were they? That first sentence is irrelevant. If there's a car that's a second apart and they're each going at 108 kilometers an hour, how many meters apart were they? So we've got to work out, if it was 180 kilometers an hour, we've got to work out what that is in seconds. Um, so it would be that many meters per hour. And then if we divide by 60 twice, we get how many meters per second? Is that right? So that divided by 60 gets us 30,000, and that will be meters per minute. And divide this by 60 again, gets you, if I divided by 60 correct, no divide this by 60 again you're going to get divided by 6 you get 500 so by 60 you get 50 so just to be careful we've just changed all we've done is changed kilometers per hour into meters per second we multiply by a thousand to get meters per hour and then we divide by 60 twice to get and for hours to seconds I think it's 50 Six friends, Pat, Kasim, Roman, Sam, Tara and Uma, are standing in line for photograph. There are three people standing between Pat and Kasim, and two between Kasim and Roman, and one between Roman and Sam. Sam is not either at the end of the line. How many people are standing between Tara and Uma? Okay, so we've got six spaces, and we're putting these people in. All right, so Pat and Kasim have to be has to be PQ or PQ. Two between Kasim and Roman. Q. 
which means Roman has to be here and here because you need two spaces between Q and R and one between Roman and Sam Roman and Sam and Sam is not at the end of the line so Sam is also here how many people standing between Tara and Uma? Well, actually, weirdly, we, have to, we don't know which of these it is, but we know that this is Tara or Uma. This is Tara or Uma, as are these. And it's going to be two people. It's either going to be Sam and Kasim or uh, Pat and Roman. It's going to be two people, whichever way around these are. They're the only options. It's going to be two. Two congruent, that just means identical, same angles, lengths and everything. Pentagons are each formed by removing a right-angled isosceles triangle from a square of side length 1. Uh, two pentagons are then put together as a shape. So I think that makes that the centre of the original square, if there's an original square there. What is that? What is the length of the perimeter of the octagon formed? Okay. Okay, so we have a 1, a 1, a 1, and a 1, and then we need to work out this bit, which is going to be 1 subtract this bit. So we need to work out how this bit is. So if you have, you take off your isosceles triangle, it's right angled with side length 1. You can work out what these two sides are. Let's call it x. We can say that 2x squared is 1. So x squared is a half, is 1 squared. You get the idea. Um, this is using Pythagoras. And x squared is a half, which means x is going to be the square root of a half, which is root 2 over 2. I've just rationalized it. You've just said uh, if you square root a half, you get square root of 1 over square root of 2. But if you rationalize this, you get root 2 over 2. So root two, so x is two root two over two. So this length here is I'm just going to call it x to save my time, x and x. And then this little bit and this little bit will be one subtract x. I don't even need to know x that weirdly. So those two little bits. So if we have get our eraser, I think x is root two over two. I don't think we need to know it. Because if we want the perimeter of this whole shape, we have four ones, two x's, and then two more ones take x's. Oh, it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. So this, this plus this has to be one, and then you've got that plus that has to be one as well. Yeah. You don't even need to work out where x is. You can just. Uh, just go from there. So we're going to have, it's just going to be 6, I think. Yeah. So there was a quick way there, and I missed it. A three-piece suit consists of a jacket, a pair of trousers, and a waistcoat. Two jackets and three pairs of trousers cost 380, and a pair of trousers costs the same as two waistcoats. So two jackets and three pairs of trousers, it's 380. Uh, this is quite nice actually. So we're going to say two jackets plus two pairs of trousers plus two waistcoats is 380. All I've done is that the, the last trouser here I've swapped for the price of two waistcoats. So two jackets and three trousers is that. Two jackets, two trousers plus another trousers is also 318, which means one of each is 190. It feels like you're missing information there. And just as a tip, in my opinion, it's never going to be this answer. So if you get to the point where you think you want to guess and you're not sure, never guess that answer, that type of answer where you don't know enough information. They're not going to give you questions without enough information. They're just not going to do it. And the time the time where it is possible 
where they do that, then I will apologise to you. 16 factorial divided by 2 to the power of k is an odd integer, and it tells you what a factorial is. So fact, 16 factorial will be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 da, 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 times 15 times 16. What is the value of k? It's an odd integer. So yeah, this is actually doable, isn't it? So, six, so basically, 16 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 15 times 16. And if you divide this by a power of 2, for you to get an odd answer, you need no factors of 2 left. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the factors of 2 of 16. So we've got 2 times 4, which is 2 squared, times 6, which is a 2 and a 3, times 8, which is 2 cubed, times 10, which is just 2 fives, times 12, which is 4 threes, times 14, which is 2 sevens, times 16, which is 2 to the power of 4. So to divide 16 factorial by a power of 2 and leave an odd number, you need to divide by enough 2s to cancel all these out. Because if any of these are left, your final answer will be even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15. There we go. Diane has five identical blue discs, two identical red discs, and one yellow disc. She wants to place them in the grid opposite so that each cell contains exactly one disc. The two red discs are not to be placed in cells that share a common edge. How many different looking completed grids can she produce? Blech. So imagine you've got Whatever's left is blue. So the red, the reds are the ones that got the restrictions. So if you go red, you can go for 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 red. Let's say red here. You've got one one possibility. You've got two more possibilities. And then you've got from here, and then you can have here, 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 here. So from here, you've got three possibilities where the red's on this column. And if it isn't in this column, you've got two possibilities. So this gives you five possibilities for another red. And you can have five possibilities for the red there. Okay, so if there's a red in the first column, there are ten possible ways to distribute the rest of the reds. If there isn't a red in the first column, so you've got to, you've got to then have red, 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 or red, red, red. So I think there are twelve possibilities to do all the reds. And for each of these, there are six possibilities for where the yellow goes. Is that right? Well, that's not right, is it? I'm going to come back to this one because I'm nowhere near it. I'm going to come back to this. Uh, you got this one wrong, Sam. Yeah, um, I think my final answer will have to be a multiple of six, which they all are. Right, I'm going to come back to this.
I, I'm, because my first guess was 60, so I'm way out from what I need to be doing. Uh, you remember doing the whole paper, Tim? Uh, so for those watching on YouTube, I'm streaming this live on Twitch. So obviously I do these live on Twitch, so I've got some people chatting in the chat. Their job is to <laughs> potentially point out if I make a numerical mistake, but um, and only to jump in if I'm stuck. So I'm going to come back to that one. There's probably I'm probably missing how to start it off. The shaded area shown in the diagram consists of the interior of a circle of radius 3 together with the area between the circle and two tangents of the circle. The angle between the tangents at the point where they meet is 60. What is the shaded area? So my guess is we can split this into two right angle triangles. And then work out what fraction of a circle we have left. So that's going to be 30. So these are going to be 60 each. Which is 120. So this is going to be 240 or 2 thirds. So this, this area here, the, the circle, is going to be 2 thirds of pi times r squared, which is 9. Uh, so this bit here is just going to be 2 thirds of 9 pi, which is going to be 6 pi. So already I think it's going to be this one or this one, but we will see. And then the area of each of these triangles is, that's 3. Do I need to know another length? Oh, if it's a 60, 30 triangle, this is going to be 6, isn't it? because of trigonometry. If you've got a Yeah, so if that was six and that was three, you get your you get your sixty thirty triangle because of sine thirty is a half and things like that. I've done I've done them the wrong way around, but you get the idea. So you can work out the area of one of the triangles. It's just gonna be half A B sine C. So it's gonna be half times 6 times 3 times sine 60 which is going to be half of 6 times 3 is going to be 9 lots of sine 60 is root 3 over 2 and you've got two of these that's one triangle so two of the triangles is 9 root 3 plus 6 pi is going to be this one Put the red in the corner and count the various ways of putting second red and yellow. Oh, yes, what I, what I failed to account for. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that. But yeah, you've given me a hint. Thanks, Tim. Which diagram represents a set of all points x, y satisfying y squared minus y equals, oh, I hate these, x squared plus 2x. Y squared minus 2y. Hmm. So when when x is 0, y can be 0. So when x is 0, y squared minus 2y is 0, so y lots of y minus 2 is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0 or 2. So when x is 0, y equals 0 or 2. So already I can cancel that out and that out. OK, 
Okay, so when I erase my working out, I can cancel out those two. Because when x is 0, y isn't 2 on either of these, but it is on the other three. I'm going to try a similar trick. I'm going to say when y is 0, uh, then x squared plus 2x has to be 0, which means x, lots of x plus 2 has to be 0, which means x is 0, or x is minus 2. Which means it can't be can't be that one. So it's one of these two. I don't like what I'm about to do here, but I'm going to try it. So I'm going to. It's still not these three for various reasons. It looks like either something doesn't exist, or they're the same, but it looks like that, that to be the point minus 1, minus 1. You can see that that point there is between 0 and 2, and 0 and negative 2. So I'm going to try y equals negative 1, and x is negative 1, and see if I either get no solution, or uh, they're close to being the same. So that's, thing, that's what I'm going to do. I don't like my method here. Multiplied by negative 1 is negative 1 squared plus 2 lots of negative 1. So this is going to be 1 plus 2 is 1 take 2. So I think it's probably this one because it doesn't look like that. They're not even close. 3 does not equal negative 1. And they're not even close, so I don't think there's a solution to when x and y are slightly negative. I'm going to guess that one. Positive integers, m, n, and p satisfy the equation. I mean, I don't. I'm going to say now, guys, I don't like my method here. But if you're trying to get the highest score in an exam and you know that it's one of these two because you've already eliminated the rest of them out. I will get four marks when I'm right and lose a mark when I'm wrong. So it's worth guessing in this particular spot because the the expectation that you'll gain is pretty good. And I think I have a reason why I think I'm not just guessing. I think I have an educated guess, although I'm not. I don't like what I've done. Uh, so if you are doing this in the real thing, you've got to judge whether your guess is worthwhile. Is it worthwhile? It's definitely never worthwhile to random guess. Is it worthwhile to have an educated guess like that? Well, if you've got it between two options and you always guess, then you'll get four marks half the time for two marks, and you'll lose a mark half the time for minus half a mark, so in the long run you'll actually gain. Positive integers, m, n, and p satisfy the equation this. What is the value of p? Well, if you divide 3 by 1.5, you get a whole number, but then 3m doesn't do it. So basically, I'm going to look at the different possibilities. If you're taking, if 3m has to be a whole number because p is a, so m is an integer. y equals 1, y equals 1, 1 take 2 is negative 1, this will have a, will it not have a solution? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to trust, I've, I've guessed right there, but we will see. What is my p? So I, I'm looking to make this sort of a multiple of 3. So 17, if we take off this 3m from 17, we need to try and get this to be 14, 11, 8, 5, 2. So 
So how can I make this any of those? So if this was 1.5, you could do it. N would be 1 and P would be 2. So I think that works. That was my first guess, wasn't it? That the denominator is 1.5. So I think you can have M as uh, M as 5, N as 1, and P as 2. I think that works. And it feels like there's only going to be one solution. That works. So 3 fives are 15 plus 3 over 1 plus a half. 3 over 1 plus a half is 2. 17, yeah, that's going to work. Two circles, C1 and C2, have their centres at the point 3, 4 and touch a third circle, C3. The centres of C3 is at the point 0, 0 and its radius 2. So are these the same circle? That can't be right. So if we have, so C3 is going to have centre 0, 0. And radius 2, so it's going to be 2, 2. And then you've got another one at the centre 3, 4. You've got two circles up here, two circles up here. Now, that's one way to touch, and I guess that's the other way to touch. They must be different, they haven't specified in the question, but they must be different. So this, this and this, so I'm going to call the smaller one C1 and the larger one C2, and then this one's going to be C3. I imagine that's what we're looking for, and what we're looking for, the sum of the radii, we're looking for this distance plus um, this distance. So we know that the distance between here and here is 5. And yeah, so because this is a this is 3 by 4, this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, 3, 4. So the difference, the distance between the center of this circle and the center of this circle is 5. And so that distance must be 3. The radius of the smaller circle is 3. And the radius of the larger circle is going to be 3 plus the whole diameter of this one, 4, is 7. So the radius of C2 must be 7. Which means the radius of C1 and C2 must be 10. I wish they'd had... I wish they mentioned just they were different size circles because I think people will misread this and think, hang on, they're basically the same. There's only one way to touch this circle without spotting the fact that you can have a larger one just touching. So I wish it specified. 
because some people are going to go six as an answer. I think that will be a decent answer because they're just going to think, well, C1 and C2 are the same size. It must be six. The letters P, Q, R, S, and T represent different positive integers, single, apologies, pos positive single digit numbers such that P take Q is R and R take S is T. How many different values could T have? Hmm. R take S is T. They have to be different and they have to be single digit numbers. Well, R has to be at least three. Because R subtracts something equals something, and these both have to be, bear in mind, S and T have to be positive single digit numbers. So the, the so T, so R has to be at least 3, because S and T can then be 1 and 2 either way around. So T can definitely be 1 or 2. Because P take Q can be 9 and 6, 7 and 4, 8 and 5. So that's fine. So when R is 3, T can be 1 or 2. Can R be 4? R can be 4 because P and Q can be 9 and 5. And if R can be 4, then T can be 3. R can be 5. And the only way to get 5, you can do 9 and 4 or 8 and 3 for P and Q. And if R is 5, there would have to be 8 and 3 so that T can be 4. So R is 5, 8 and 3, S would be 1 and T would be 4. Can R be 6? You have 9 and 3, or 8 and 2, or 7. You can't, uh, you can't have 7 and 1 because we're trying to get 5 here. So R could be 6, you could have 9 and 3, S can be 1, and T can be 5. So T can be 5. Can R be 7? You have 9 and 2 to get the 7. S can be 1, which means R can be 6. Sorry, T can be 6. Can R be 8? So R can't, can be 8 if the only way to get R to be 8 is if P and Q are 9 and 1. But if P and Q are 9 and 1, you can't get T to be 7 because S then also needs to be 1. So I don't think that one works. So I weirdly think... That R can be six different digits. So T can be six different digits, one through six. I didn't like that. Real numbers X and Y satisfy the equation. Four to the power of Y equals one over eight lots of root two to the power X plus two. And nine to the power X times three to the power Y is three root three. What is the value of 5 to the power x plus y? Oh my god. Well, you can write this as 3 to the power 1.5, or 3 over 2, 
and you can write this as 3 to the power 2x. So you've got a simultaneous equation where 2x plus y is 1.5. There's 1. Can we get a second one? I wonder if we can do something similar here. If we write this as a power of 2, 8 is 2 cubed. And two, that's 2 to the half. So I'm going to try the same with that, although this is not as easy. So 4 to the power y is 2 to the power 2y. And then the denominator of this is 2 cubed times 2 to the half to the power x plus 2. This is going to be 2 to the 2y equals 9. So they get multiplied, so you're going to get half x plus 1 to the 3. So it's going to be 1 over 2 to the power 4 plus a half x. And then this is the same as the negative power. So this is going to be 2 to the 2y equals 2 to the power negative half x plus 4. And from this, we can get another simultaneous equation. We've got 2 to the power of this is 2 to the power of that. So the, the powers need to be the same. So we've got 2y I'm going to add the, the half x to the other side plus a half x is 4. So we've got a simultaneous equation. That is not nice, and it's not even the last question yet, is it? And so we're going to solve these simultaneously. So we're going to, uh, if we double the top one, we're going to get 4x plus 2y is 3. We'll get rid of that decimal. And then we can subtract this one from this one. So we're going to subtract the other way around. So we're going to 4x take a half x is 3 and a half x. 3 take 4 is negative 1. Oh dear. So x is negative 1 over 3.5 or negative 2 sevenths. Yeah. Have I done? Have I gone wrong, Tim? Thank you, thank you. That's negative four. That's much better. Thank you very much. Well spotted. Yeah, that's better. That's much better because the three and a half goes into negative seven. So yeah, that's much better. So now we're, we're going to subtract these. We're going to get. We're still going to get three and a half x. But we're going to get negative seven. So x is negative 2. If x is negative 2, then you're going to get negative 4 plus y is 1.5. So y is 5.5. And the question is, what is 5 to the power x plus y? So x plus y is 3.5. What is 5 to the power 3.5? Oh dear, have I gone wrong again? Um, I've gone wrong again somewhere. What have I done? Oh, there we go. 3 subtract negative 4 is positive 7, so x is positive 2, which means 4 plus y is 1.5, y is negative, negative 2.5, and then x plus y is negative 0.5, which means it's that one. Uh, sorry, mistakes are plenty there. Mistakes are plenty. When written out in full, the number 10 to the power 2020 plus 
2020, all squared has that many digits. What is the sum of the digits of this number? So this number is going to be and then you're going to square that Now all these zeros are relevant, weirdly, so I think you can probably just square 122. I think because all those zeros are just going to, the size of the numbers are relevant, it's all about the non-zeros. So I think you can just square 122 and get the same non-digit zeros in your answer. Because even, even carries won't affect it because you're summing the digits up. And there's not going to be any carries, is there, with 122. So, 122 squared, uh, two lots of that is 244, 20 lots of that is 2440, 100 lots of that is 12200, 48841. Yeah, there's no carry, so there's no worry about my little trick there. I think my little trick's fine. And if we sum these together, we get 8, 16, 24, 25. The square with perimeter 4 centimetres can be cut into two congruent right angle triangles and two congruent trapezia, as shown in the first diagram. Such a way that the four pieces can be rearranged to form the rectangle shown in the second diagram. What is the perimeter in centimetres of this rectangle? So that one, that one's four, that bit there is four. And then... Hmm. <laughs> that's four and that's four. So we need to know this, 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 and this. So I wonder if are they the same length? Is this length the same as this length because this is the same as this because they line up? They join up there, so they're the same layout. Yeah, so weirdly, I'm just going to just clear that up. We think, let's say that's uh, x. Then this has to be x as well because they line up here. So this length here is 4 take x. And this length here is also 4 take x. So for this shape here, which is which is here and here, the you don't need that one. In fact, that's just x, isn't it? That's just x. So this one here, this is going to do all these dots around the edge here. If I just eliminate this dot here, all these dots around the edge are four take x, or x is the cut. Apologies. A square of perimeter 4, so it's 1 take x. And this is 1, this is 1. So the perimeter of this is going to be 6 take 4x. Okay? So what's x? <laughs> what's x? Uh, so the area of this has to be the same as the area of this. Now the area of this is 1. So the area of this has to be 1 as well. So you know from a separate fact, I'm just going to multiply the base by the height here. You've got the base is 1 take it as 2 subtract an x multiplied by 
1 subtract x equals 1. So if you expand this out, you're going to get 2 take 2x plus x squared is 1. x squared take 2x plus 1 is 1. So x minus 1 all squared. x is 1. Well, x can't be 1. x can't be 1, can it? Because then this, this has no area. Or, or this length isn't... Right, I'm doing something wrong. Can you help, Tim? See you, Sam. Thanks for popping by. I'm going to come back to this one as well. Bear in mind, I'm looking what time I've got. So I've had nearly 60 minutes and I've got 90 minutes. So I've got another 30 minutes to try and have a go. Oh, God, I hate functions. I'm going to come back to this one as well. Yeah, don't like doing those. Not good at them. In the diagram shown, M is the midpoint of PQ. The line PS bisects RPQ. RPQ and intersects RQ at S, but that's not necessarily the midpoint, isn't it? I think it is actually. If you bisect an angle, I think you also bisect the side. That's true, isn't it? So I think S is the midpoint of RQ. The line ST is parallel to PR, so this is parallel to that. And the length of PQ is, there's a lot going on here, the length of PQ is 12. I'm going to make the diagram a bit bigger. So I can write on it. I don't even know what I'm working out yet. The length of MT is 1 and the angle SQT is 120. So let's put some information on this diagram. So this diagram we have that line is parallel to that one. This length here is 1. The whole length of PQ is 12. And I think S is the midpoint of this. So this and this is the same, I think. And what we're trying to work out, what is the length of SQ? So you know this length here is 6, and this length here is 5. Hmm, I think this angle here is the same as this angle here. And because the line PS bisects it, this is a half of this angle. And I think that means that this triangle here is isosceles. So if you can imagine, let's call this x. This is 180 take x, which means these two have to add up to x. But this is half of x, 
So this is half of x. So I think this triangle here is isosceles. So I think you know that this length here is also 7. Because this length from p to t is 7. So we have a triangle here. where we have two sides in an angle. Hmm. I wonder if it's similarity because I think it's similarity. So you've got um, the whole triangle. Yeah, I think it's similarity. So I'm just going to um, put some numbers on. So I'm going to clear what, my, what I've done and put some numbers on. So from previous ones, we know the whole length is 12 at the bottom here. We know this length there is 7, and this length there is 5. And we know this is the same as this. So we know that if we want to find out, we know, let's call this length x, which is the one we're trying to find out. We know this triangle is a 5, 7, x triangle. We know is similar to a 12, because basically the angle's the same, and because they're parallel, this angle is the same as this one. Maybe you don't need to know that 7. Because they're parallel, you know that the, the, the angles in the three shapes are the same, so you know that this triangle, 5, 7, x, is the same as a 12, 2x triangle. So, to get from, yeah. so maybe bisecting the angle doesn't bisect the side. I thought it did. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe maybe it doesn't. I was thinking that to get from x to 2x you double it, but you don't double 5 to 12, do you? So that doesn't work. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Come back to that one as well. I'm not doing very well today. Not doing very well today. A regular m mm gone, and a regular n mm gone, and a regular p gone share a vertex, and pairwise share edges as shown in the diagram. It's the largest possible value p. Uh, they've got to fit together with no gap, which means they have to add up to 360, and then we could list the polygons. So you've got 60, 90, this is for three-sided, four-sided, and so on. 90, 108, 120, seven-sided shape would be an awful number. An eight-sided shape is 144, I think. Hmm. 
So if you pair these together as your two smallest ones, I mean you could have this twice, couldn't you? Oh, but then so if we say that n and m are the two small ones, then they have to add up to more than 180. So they have to be bigger than those two. So you could have 1908, that works, and hope that the remaining and hope that the remaining angle is a polygon. So if we go 198. Is that the smallest over 180 we can go though? 198 leaves from 360. It leaves uh, 172, 162. There's 162 a polygon. Eighteen. That's a ten-sided polygon. So you can have ninety and one six two, which is a four-sided, a five-sided, and a ten-sided. Which is not an option, but I know it's not six because I can get a ten-sided one. So what do I need to do? I mean, these aren't going to be whole number of degrees. This one might be. Apologies, 162. Uh, 162 is 20. 162 is 20, I think. Because uh, you're 18 degrees short of a line. So if you think about your polygon, there's my P gone. If this angle is 18 degrees and you had 20 18s, that makes 360. So this would then be 162. So I wonder if it's 20, but that feels quite easy for the last question. So I wonder if there's a way to make one of the other ones. So if you're 42, we're looking for, and uh, there's, there's your peak on, looking for an angle that 42 of them makes 360. So you just, the angle here is 360 divided by 42. Which is going to be 180 divided by 21, which is going to be uh, 60 divided by 7. I wonder if divided by 7 works actually, because I wonder if you're looking at, because we, we, we missed out the heptagon earlier. The heptagon was 360, the exterior angle divided by 7. And I wonder if you get the same sort of remainder here. This is the same as, well, that's unsimplified, is it? But that you're going to get the same remainder. So I wonder if you can use a heptagon, something else, and then a 40-sided, 40 42-sided shape. What about 50? It's going to be 7.2. That might be nicer. And divided by 100, it's going to be 3.6. I'm not sure I'm an elegant way of doing this. And then a hundred one is three points, an exterior angle of three point six. So 
could write a list of all the interior angles down and try and get some pairs of them. But I'd, like, if I'm going all the way up to a hundred sided shape, I might need a computer or a calculator to do this. I'm not sure of an elegant way of doing this. So I know, I know that that is a, that is an answer, and that works. And it feels like with a heptagon and something else, you can make that work. And it feels like potentially you can even make these work if you can get the right. Hmm, maybe. All right. How long have we got? We've got uh, about 18 minutes left. So we're going to go back and have a go at the ones I got stuck on. So. Uh, it's it was oh, that one. There we go. Right. So, assuming that, assuming you put a red in the first column, let's assume you put it there, and then you can go red, red. So you can have three combinations putting a red there. And if you don't put a red there, you can have one combination putting a red there and one combination of putting a red there. The last red is forced. So from that position, you can have five reds. And from that position, you can have five reds. And then if you don't put a red in the first column, you've only got two options. You basically have alternate reds, so red, 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 or red, red, red. So you've got one option and one option. So in total, I think you've only got 12 options for how the reds fit in because of the restrictions you've got. I'm restricting myself too much. I'm not getting a big enough answer. What about trying it this way? So let's say same again. First red here. Second red has one, two, three, four, five options. So red, second red has one, two, three, four, five. Depending where you put that, you're limited to options of the third one. You're going to be counting yourself. So basically, if you do that, and then the second red here and the third red here, you're going to be counting the same thing as doing that second red here, third red here. It's going to be the same thing. So maybe you divide by two at the end. The problem is so the way you put the second red restricts you in different ways. So if I put the second red here, I only restrict one more space. But if I put the second red here, I restrict two more spaces, three more spaces. That second red here is forced. So first red, two ways, and then either of those is the last one's forced. It has to be the opposite thing. So from here, there are two ways 
to do the third column. No, that's, I, I don't know, I can't do this. Alright, can't do that one. Not going to guess. Alright, let's reset this. This is, so what I'm saying is that if this is x, this is 1 minus x, as is this, and that's x because it lines up. And that is 1 minus x, and that is 1 minus x, and that is x, and that is 1. So each edge, add, each edge adds up to 1. That works. And this one, that is 1, and that is 1 minus x, and that is 1 minus x, and that is 1, and this is 1 minus x. I want the perimeter in centimetres to this rectangle. So the perimeter of this one is 4. The perimeter of this one is 6, take 4x. So that's right. I think what I'm doing is right. And then what I need to do is I need to try and work out where x is. Hmm. The areas have to be the same. So 1 minus x multiplied by 2 minus x has to equal the same area. Is that what, This is what I did last time, and this is going to get me 2, take 3x, maybe I did that wrong, plus x squared is 1. Oh yeah, I had 2x there instead of 3x, so this is going to be x squared, take 3x, plus 1 is 0. And this doesn't factorise, so this is where I'm going to get the root from. So if we solve this using the quadratic formula, we've got... I could complete the square, I mean it's, it's a little bit of the same. We just want the, the... we're going to get a positive and negative answer most likely, so we just want the positive answer. So we've got minus b uh, plus or minus square root of b squared minus... 4 times a times c. It looks like the first one. It looks like I'm going to get root 5 there. Over 2a. This is going to be 3 plus root 5 over 2. Or 3 minus root 5 over 2. Root 5 is also positive, isn't it? What am I doing wrong? Oh, x. Ca oh, actually, weirdly, I want the smaller answer. X can't be large. It can't be the large answer. So I actually want x is three minus root five over two, because this is less than one, which is what you need because of that. So, finally, what's the perimeter in centimetres of the rectangle? I think that's what x is. So we want 6 minus 4 lots of 3 minus root 5 over 2. Yeah, I had the right method last time. I just got, I just got that digit wrong. Um, so 6 take 4 lots of this is going to be 6 minus 2 lots of that. 6 plus root 5 root 5? I can't be right. Am I missing something out? Yeah, I am 2 root 5. Missing a 2 there. Yeah, it's just 2 root 5. Alright, got that one. Uh, uh, the function one and then this one. I don't know if I can be able to do that one. So let's have a look at the function one. A function f satisfies y cubed fx equals x cubed f of y, and f of 3 is not 0. What is the value of that? I can't, I, I'm just not very good at these. My guess is you substitute f of 3 in. 
Let's see what you get. So we've got y cubed f of 3 equals 3 cubed f of y. Yeah, I'm just it's not it's not my it's not what I'm good at. I'm just gonna leave it. I can't do these. Uh that one we didn't get either did we? Oh this is annoying. This is one of the worst ones I've had to go at. Alright, what am I missing? So I'm pretty sure because this is because these lines are parallel, that angle's the same as that one. That angle is half of that one, so they're the same. Yeah, this has to be isosceles, which means if this is 7, this is 7. Well, I'm not sure 7 helps us. Uh, you can work out this length here because the, the, the triangles are similar. I think maybe we're just assuming that you can bisect the sides. I don't think you can. I think if you bisect, I thought if you bisected the angle, you bisect the side. But if you bisect the side you don't necessarily bisect the angle. I think that's correct. So 5 to 12 is multiplied by 2.4 7 times 2.4 is 15.4. Sorry, 2.4 is 15. 7 times, I don't think you need this side, but 7 times 2.4 is 14. 16.8. I'm not sure this works because the small triangle TSQ is similar to the large triangle PQR because how is it? Yeah it is because this angle is the same as those two together. Oh, I think I'm going to pass. This is bad. And then this one, yeah, I, I'm going to call that a day. So we're going to not get a good score, but I'm not going to guess at ones I don't know. So apologies. And I will try and go through the ones. I'll try and go through the ones that I didn't get. So let's get my mark scheme up and hang my head in shame at how poorly I've done today. And we're going to try it. Well, will we get over 100? I do not know. We will see. All right, question one is D. Question two is C. Question three is A. Question four is B. Question five is C. Question six is E. Question seven is D. Question eight is also D. Question nine is B. Question ten is C. Question 11 is, I need to scroll down, question 11 is, oh, is E. Question 12 is B. Question 13 is D. Question 14, did not do, is B. Let's have a look. So they got, they got 18 different positions for the red disc. Oh, I'm being so silly. I thought there were three red discs. There's only two. There's only two. Oh, yeah, this is doable. I was going, I was, I was, I miscounted two red discs. So basically, from here, there are five possibilities to the next one. So from here, there's five. 
which means from here there's five, which means from here there are three, and here there are three, here there is one, here there is one. So you've got 18 possibilities for the first, the first two red discs. And then the rest will be blue apart from one yellow. So there'll be six, there'll be six non-red spaces. One of them will be yellow. So there's six, for each one of these positions, there are six possibilities for the red one. Oh, uh, that was annoying. I could have got that. I was doing the right thing. I was just miscounting. I thought there were three red discs. Read the question, Steve. 15 is A. 16 is, am I going to get this wrong? This is my guess. 16 is E. 16 is E, so we got that one wrong. Oh, that done it quite nice, actually. Yeah, I'm going to show you what they did and whether this is the best way of doing it. It might just be the elegant way of doing this question. So they've said, they've rearranged the first one. They've rearranged it to say y squared take x squared equals 2x plus 2y. And then they factorise each of these. You've got y minus x, y plus x is two lots of x plus y. And you've got, uh, so you can subtract 2x, you can subtract this to get 0 on the other side. So you've got y minus x. And then you've got uh, so y minus x, y plus x, take 2x plus y. Now you can see that this is a common factor. So you've actually got y minus x minus 2 lots of y plus x or x plus y so you've either got this is 0 or this is 0 and then you can just plot each of those graphs so basically the graph y plus x is 0 means y equals negative x which is this graph here and then this one y minus x minus 2 is 0 is the same as saying y equals x plus 2, which is this one. Yeah, okay. I like the method they've done. I would never have spotted that. So, question 17. So, bear in mind, uh, question 16 was E. We got that wrong. So, I'll tick that to the cross and tick. All right. Question 17 is A. Question 18 is E. Question 19 is A. Question 20 is E. Question 21 is C. Question 22 is A. Yeah, I don't even understand what they've done. That's, I, I'm just not good at that thing. All right, so question oh, question 23 was a 296 if you managed it. If you did, congratulations, you beat me. Question 24 was B. Now, what have they done? So they've said, yeah, so they've shown it's, they've shown this triangle here as isosceles. SPT. Yeah. Oh, just use the cosine rule. Oh, I had the information. I have used the. Oh, that was really bad of me. So this this triangle here, we don't need the rest of the information. We just use the cosine rule. So once we've got that, this is seven. That's what you needed. That's why you need seven. We can use the cosine rule, which is. Um, can say that 7 squared is 
x squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times x times 5 times cos 120 and work it out from there. <coughs> yeah, and you get a quadratic in t. Cos 120 is a half. Uh, so you get a quadratic in x, sorry, in this particular case. Yeah, okay, that was, that was another one I could have done. And this one was c. So they worked out that 290s is 180, or a 60 and a 120 is 180. And so what you need to do to maximise P is you need to go over 180 by as little as possible. So because these are exactly 180, if you add one side, so basically these are two, this is two squares, and this is a triangle and a hexagon. If you add one to each of these and try for the remainder, whichever remainder gets you the shape is the smallest you can do it by. Because if you increase each of these by more, you'll get a smaller shape. Um, there's a lot of working out they've done, but they got C. Um, yeah. So we're going to mark it. We've not done very well today, so we're going to mark it. So what did we get wrong? So we missed out 14 because I misread the question. So for the first 15. Oh, it doesn't break it down. So the first so first 15, so we missed out 14. We got 16 wrong. And we missed out three at the end, I think. Missed out the last three. Yeah, that was really bad. I could have done that. So we missed out four and got one wrong. So we got 20 right. So 20 times four is 80. We had four lots of nothing, because we got four we didn't do. Two of those we could have done. And then we got one lot of negative one. So we gained 79 plus 25 is 104. Plus 25 is 104. Did you beat me? There was a very good chance you have if this is your sort of thing. Um, please post your comment in the video below. Uh, that would be lovely to see what you got. How did you do? Did you did you get some questions I didn't get? Did I get a question you really like the answer of? Is there any elegant methods I picked? I don't think I did very well today, <clears throat> but we will be back in, in future. We're going to do the 2018 math challenges. While I've still got access to them all, I'm going to do as many as I can. Um, but that's it, yeah, uh, that's all I've got time for today. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe on YouTube, it costs you nothing. Um, it allows you to kind of follow me and support me as a channel. Obviously, there's also a link to my Twitch page in there. I do maths, I play board games, I play chess, I do all sorts of things on Twitch. And you can chat to me as I'm going along if you want to do that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope you did better than I did. Uh, see you later.